Do you identify as black? <laughs> no, it's a serious question because you might not identify. Can you please put the mic? Thank you. Okay. Uh, when I Less walked into, when I walked into the question. room, I am I not done with my question. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, young lady, young lady. I, I'm just asking you to listen to me. While and and, I, and my I'm about question. to answer okay. your first question. But I didn't, I didn't finish my question. Okay. Yeah, I'm black. Less than nine percent of the people in this room are black, and we're all not here for you. Do okay. you think there are racial inequalities in America? And how do you feel about Trump increasing both economic inequality and discrimination for people of, people of color and LGBTQ people? What about violence against marginalized people in the United States? Can you talk about that? Well, the, the subject was about you know national security and foreign policy. But I will tell you that uh, I think in the minority community, in the black community, I think they're pretty happy that unemployment isn't at an all-time low in the United States of America for Hispanic and black communities. And, and that's the truth. As a matter of fact, overall unemployment is an all-time low. So if you want to break the, uh, the pay gap or racial inequality gap, the most important thing is my parents taught me, who were black, born and raised down south, was about equality of opportunity and not equality of outcomes. I would challenge you to read the book by a black man by the name of Booker T. Washington called Up From Slavery. Okay? That's funny. Because W.E.B. E. Du Bois is much better at describing uh, the racial inequalities in America well, well, that you are denying that happen now. And to say that, like, we are better and unemployment is down is dismissing the fact that a lot of LGBTQ people are in trouble right now because of your administration. And a well, lot of I'm, black I'm not people, in the administration. I'm just a guy I mean, here. you are you are supporting <laughs> I mean, the administration, though, aren't you? I'm not speaking for the administration. Oh, I mean, okay. Unless Sorry, you were, I didn't know that. I, yeah, you I'm just a private a citizen. I'm just Joe Sixpack. Okay, I have a second question. I'm sorry for my tone. Previously, I was just frustrated. That's okay. I have two daughters. They talk to me like that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my question but is... But I cut them off with their allowance. <laughs> well, you don't have that ability here. I know, I know. <laughs> um, um, my question is about national security, because I do feel like the, um, the KKK and white nationalists are threats to black individuals at, uh, in the United States. There have been multiple shootings recently within the last 10 years, and there have been an increase of violence against black people. And I wanted to know if you think that that's a national security issue and how you would address that. Yeah, I think it's a national security issue right here in the south side of Chicago where you have a combat zone going on and Rahm Emanuel and everyone just seems to not care or as well as in Baltimore or other places. And that's black on black crime. That's not KKK or whatever. But what about but, white on black crime? I'm well, sorry, but that's, that's what I was asking. Oh, okay, well then, have you ever heard of Margaret Sanger? You can't just give one example. For well, Mar audience. Margaret Sanger and the organization that she founded uh, since 1973 almost 17 million unborn black babies have been murdered by that organization. I think that's something that we should really be concerned about. The fact that the United States government gives $568.7 million to an organization that was founded by a white supremacist, a racist, a person that uh, spoke at Klan rallies, that referred to blacks as undesirables and weeds, I would join forces with you in a heartbeat to say that we need to cut off funding to an organization like that called Planned Parenthood. That 50... Well, I don't think we give taxpayer money to the no, Ku Klux Klan. It's a terrorist organization well, that I, has not been targeted by the FBI. I, 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 well, yeah, they have. White, <laughs> the FBI goes after white supremacist organizations. But then I would ask you, why is it that, why is it that nobody goes after Antifa? I mean, I think Antifa is also a domestic terrorist organization. I mean, look at what they have done at uh, certain colleges and universities to prevent people from going out there and uh, freely speaking. So uh, let's, let's, call, let's call a ball a ball and a strike a strike. And so there are many organizations out there that we need to be targeting. But I will tell you, first and foremost, we shouldn't give $568.7 million to an organization like that. And if you do some research, I think between 50 to 55% of Planned Parenthood clinics are in black communities. That's a travesty. I am not done with my question. Oh, 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 oh. Young lady, young lady. Let me ask my question. And, and, I, and I'm about question. to answer okay. the first question. But I think I didn't finish my Yeah, I'm black. Less than 9% of the people in this room are black. And we're all not here for you.